Now, I think I've mentioned this before. I am a member of a Facebook group that uh, Jim Steen started. And it has to do with 200 scale model ships. But, but one of the uh, members of that group uh, made a comment about how I could, uh, you know, when I was trying to get that little piece of uh, photo etch here from under the table yesterday, you know, I could have used my uh, a magnetic, you know, telescoping type thing. And I was me I mentioned back, I've got one. And actually, I use this quite regularly if I was to drop anything metal. Except for photo etch. Now, I didn't try the photo etch. And it's not like I just tried it a few minutes ago and I know that it does or does not work. Now, let's... Uh, pick this up very carefully here. This, this is the little piece that we that we dropped yesterday. And let's just put it here. Now I have not tried this yet so you're gonna see it for me with me for the first time. Now if I drop anything like this you know <laughs> I, I automatically reach for this thing. It's just hanging just to the to the to the right of me here and I have no problem just grabbing it and and I, I use it every chance I get. But it, and I I uh, I wouldn't have used this yesterday because I didn't think it would work. But just for the fun of it, let's uh, check and see uh, if it works or not. Now, uh, you'll, you'll notice that there's, there's two uh, superimposed views that are happening exact, exactly right now in, in the, uh, on the screen. And the one that you have never seen before is the camera looking out my back bedroom window. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to do fun little things like this. I, I think this is probably going to be the first time that I've had three videos all synchronized together at the same time. Uh, it may or may not work. If you, if you don't see the extra one, well, you'll know it didn't work and I've been just sort of flopping my gums here for nothing. And anyway, let's... Uh, Let's check this out here. I'll just uh, recompose uh, and we'll move in on this little part and see what happens when we bring our magnet down close to it. Okay. It's only a little after 11 in the morning and Jonathan's mug is already oh going on half empty. Um, Alright. Now, if I put this right here, and as I mentioned, I have not uh, I have not tried this yet. Oh, well, I should another thing I wanted to mention. I I made a big deal about the fact that the camera looking out the back window. I didn't know if it was going to work. Well, the reason for that is is because it was the camera that uh, periodically the older one that shuts itself off for no apparent reason. Now I imagine the camera's probably hearing me right now because it's right beside me and it's saying, yeah, there's, there's, there is a good reason. That battery you put in me is uh, six years old and it just doesn't have the voltage that it used to. Now there may be other reasons too. Anyway, so here we go. This is actually going to be the first time I've tr I'm trying this. So are we going to stick or aren't we? No. Photo etch will not, you know, there's no iron or anything in, in the brass, in this in this brass. Well, that makes sense, because <laughs> brass is brass and iron is iron. But I thought that possibly it, it may have had, uh, you know, uh, a, a mixture of iron in it, and maybe there was enough that would... No. There's, there's just, there's just nothing there. Okay, we tried. Now we know. Now, when we soldered this piece up, these ones might be better. Okay. Um, it's going to have to turn this way. Okay, like I started to say, when we soldered this up, 
I believe we sort of closed off the, the opening. Just let me get myself a little less awkwardly here. So this may not uh, slip over like it did before. Might have to uh, take a file to the inside. Uh, Jason was mentioning something uh, interesting. He said that he finds with, that when he files solder, the solder plugs up his file. It seems to me I recall that sort of thing from my workshop experiences too. Like this is not the uh, first thing that I've soldered, although you would think it is the way I go at it. Okay, why is this? This just doesn't want to go, does it? I'll reposition here. Okay, let's try this again. You can see how it's supposed to go there. I could force it down, but then, you know, it's gonna it's gonna scratch pretty bad. Is this going? Yeah, it it looks like it's going. So let me. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my round file and just sort of carefully round the uh, the corners off, you know, where, where the, the two photo edge parts meet. And um, I think that's where the problem is. About uh, a year or two ago, I used to watch a channel. I believe he called himself Click Spring. And... Uh, this guy had a file. I don't know if he made it or if he bought it. But I, I don't know if you remember down in my workshop, I have a machine that's called an oscillating spindle sander. And the what, what happens is a spindle, as it rotates, it comes up and down. It has about a one-inch travel, I guess. And... Uh, and, but ClickSpring, he had the same sort of device, only it was a lot smaller. But it, instead of an oscillating spindle coming up, he had a, a file that came up and down out of this thing. Uh, not real fast, but a lot faster than you can do it by hand. And he could uh, precision file something. And I was thinking right now, gee, I wish I had that machine and I could attach my round file to it here. Because then I could precision file up against the edges here. Um, yeah, I think we just need to take it out right here and, and the same on the other side over here. At least that's the plan. But I don't have an oscillating power file. <laughs> so uh, I... Uh, well, maybe I'll rig something up. I'd like, I'd like to do it on camera. I, I waste a lot of time uh, setting up for the camera, but it's a lot of fun for me, so. Okay, I have a block of wood here that already has a hole in it. I don't know why we made that square hole, but uh, I guess I did that on my hollow chisel mortiser for something. And uh, Tennessee Jim and I have a sort of a joke about hollow chisel mortisers. Um, yeah, the only thing you make with your hollow chisel mortiser is a stand to put it on. That's the joke. <laughs> anyway, the idea is, if I can take my round file now, I might have to reposition here. Now, can I carefully hold this down? Maybe I'd be better off holding it down on the edge like that. And then we should be able to just just take off the uh, solder that's going to plug up my file. Well, if it does, I'll blame Jason. Okay, turn it a 
little bit here and and we'll do this other corner. Okay, now to keep it from sliding around, let's nail it down. Yeah, that'll help. Now, I'll put that on there like that. I don't want to press too hard because I'll bend it. Now we just want to take off this corner here. Oh, this is working a lot better. Whoops. Now I already did this one, but I'm just going to give it a little bit better because I can put more pressure on and it's not going to slide around on me. Okay, does it look like my file is getting uh, plugged up? I think we're okay. There already does appear to be uh, damage on the file from when I probably tried to file something that was hard, as hard as another file. Let's just give it a little bit more here. You know, it, it could be that it might be a good idea to try and bend this in. Let's see, I guess I could probably hold down with the pointy ones and use this as a, a lever to pry over and to sort of pry this over just a little bit here. I'm looking straight down on it and I can see that it probably could come my way just a little. This one is, I wonder why it's not coming, is it, or maybe it's, it's butting up against this one here. Okay, let's give it a try now, see if it's uh, any better. Now, the reason that I back off and I do a shot like this, wide angle sh shot like this, is so that you can see that, you know, how small the stuff is we're working with. For instance, these are not spikes, they are pins. Okay. Now, let's get this thing the right way around. I have to be very careful when I'm handling it, even even though the solder job has made it uh, uh, really strong. It's, it's still a very fragile little piece. Okay, I'll put the macro lens back on. Okay, what's going to happen here now? I haven't tried it yet. It's not like I already know. Okay, it just drops down. It's almost almost too loose. Wonder if we took too much off. I don't think so. It goes down to that ring that's at the that I was talking about before. Okay, we're we're viewing this thing upside down. Did wait a minute. It doesn't go this way. Okay, th this this is the top. So we've we've got this thing upside down here. Okay, it's supposed to go, I believe, like this. It's binding on something. I wonder what it is.
Oh, maybe it's going down on that, that rubber, piece of rubber. Okay. Well, it looks like it's going to go. It, it is a bit of a loose fit now. Maybe we took too much off. On the other hand, uh, you know, the, 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 the play is like a thousandth of an inch or something, and the CA glue or whatever we're going to use, <laughs> one thing's for sure, we can't solder it. Okay. Enough with this. Okay, now... This is kind of interesting here. You notice how those uh, fillets come down and, and come up against that ring? I thought the platform was supposed to come against that ring, but I was looking at the uh, manual just a minute ago, and uh, I don't... It's not clear. I'll show you what I mean. Maybe, maybe the way it's, you're looking at it right now is the way it's supposed to be. Now, while yesterday's episode, which turned out to be a lot longer than I thought it was and consequently took a lot longer to upload to YouTube, and consequently those of you who are used to seeing it on the hour had to wait about half an hour, anyway, uh, yeah, I saw this out the front window, so I thought I'd just show it to you. At least this one survived the winter. Now, uh, that kind of gets me to wanting to tell you that I feel a little bit guilty about not putting out carrots last winter. I sort of wonder how many more of these little people, you know, there would be out there uh, had I put out carrots. Um, anyway, let's get back to the model table. Yeah, that little rabbit was sitting right in the middle of my front lawn. Anyway, this is the end of step 54. And you can see here how it shows that this is supposed to drop down, but it doesn't want to go. Now I have since looked at this thing and I, I realize that if I spread the spread it just a little bit I can shove it over. So I you know, you, you would think that well maybe it's supposed to stop right here at this ring. In other words, the way it's positioned right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, but if if I go and I'll reposition the camera, I'll show you at the beginning of step fifty five that it obviously has to come all, all the way down and this platform part right here is supposed to actually uh, be at the ring. Now I don't know if it's supposed to rest on top of the ring or come up from the bottom. It's it's not real clear but obviously the platform is all the way down. Just let me uh, reposition the camera here. Now this is the very first segment that we will be working on when we start 55. So uh, not only have I repositioned the camera, but you can see I've repositioned this, our part. And I've brought it up from, from the bottom and instead of uh, uh, from the top. And so if, I think that most likely the ring is supposed to be uh, like this. Okay? It, it almost looks like the ring, if you look real close, it almost looks like there is a ring on the top. Now I don't know, but now what's going on outside? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Nothing serious. Just somebody brought a delivery to the door. So anyway, where were we? Yeah, so I think right now this is the way it's supposed to go. Now, my neighbor is going to be coming over at 3.30 this afternoon once again. And we're going to have coffee and uh, I don't want to get myself behind like I did yesterday. So I'm going to wrap this up for today, folks. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well... We'll see you tomorrow.